Human Rights Watch's report, No Justice Just Adds to the Pain, has three core findings. Firstly, extrajudicial killings, that is, deliberate killings by the security forces, have continued since President Aquino took office on June 30, 2010. Secondly, despite President Aquino's promises for justice for human rights victims, police investigations continue to stall the minute the trail of evidence leads to the military barracks. And thirdly, the underlying causes of extrajudicial killings within the military have not been adequately addressed. The issues of immunity have not been effectively tackled by successive administrations. And I think we see the same kind of mentality uh, within the armed forces, which is really the main barrier to, to, effective, um, to effectively combating immunity. When we've met with senior government officials over the last couple of days, they have said that they are very serious about investigating these cases. However, in practice, we haven't seen that yet. If we look to the recent successes in the disappearance of Jonas Rogos and the disappearance of Sherwin Duff and Man Manuel Marino and Karen Impeño, in, in those cases that are finally undergoing preliminary investigation before the Department of Justice, it still was the families that had to bring those charges. We, it is not the government itself that is being proactive still in investigating military officials and soldiers who are implicated in these cases. But really what we'd like to see now is concrete action and we think that the 10 cases that we raised in this report are as good a place as any start to show if the government is serious about honouring those human rights commitments. President Aquino made several campaign pledges to end serious violations of human rights in the Philippines. To make that happen, firstly, we'd like to see a directive from senior levels of the government that orders the military to stop targeting civilians, to stop the blanket denials of military involvement in all cases of extrajudicial killings, and to stop labeling leftist groups as simply fronts for the Communist New People's Army. Secondly, President Aquino should order the Philippine National Police and the National Bureau of Investigation to take all necessary steps to investigate and prosecute those responsible in each of these cases of killings and disappearances that are mentioned in this report. The military itself also needs to conduct transparent internal investigations and discipline officers and soldiers responsible, including those responsible under command responsibility. And thirdly, for credible investigations really to happen, we believe that it's necessary to start sanctioning those officers that are failing in their duty to conduct rigorous uh, to conduct rigorous investigations and prosecutions. The numbers may be down as far as the number of DJKs and the forensic evidences, but the real issues are the structures that generate human rights violations, and they still there. And for me, they're still there. For example, the fighting of Chambers cases against human rights activists. In the 1970s, when Marshall of Ayan, I mean, in the parliament, I'm not thinking of that. Another example, the, the lack of any mechanism for perpetuating the testimonies of witnesses in, in human rights cases, crimes of violence, corruption cases, human rights cases. We can order, for example, that all uh, promotions by the military and police must pass through the commission and the administration. The constructive engagement with human rights groups is definitely a step in the right direction, but it is merely a step, and what we need to see is investigations and prosecutions of soldiers and military officials who are implicated in these abuses. He's got so many things on his plate, I'm not sure what uh, is really grabbing his attention. Although, from our perspective, from the human rights community, we're hoping that, we will, that this will grab his attention.